album covers. A good one can sometimes make an album, but a bad one can ruin it. It's the worst thing in the world when you're really enjoying an album. You have these great visuals in your head, and then you go to look at the art to reinforce those visuals, and it's doo-doo. It's stinky. It's bad. It depends on the person how much album covers matter to you, but to me at least, I'd say it contributes at least 25% to my enjoyment of the album. So I took to Instagram to ask you guys, what are some album covers that absolutely ruin great albums? And a lot of you answered. Before we get into this, I want to give a shout out to a bucket of jake who recently put out a fantastic video on album art and how important it is to albums and that's what got me thinking about album covers so go check out his video absolutely great stuff let's begin Texas Jerusalem Crossroads by lift to experience guilty pleasure album i guess all righty <laughs> holy shit some really interesting choices. I see they got the wide angle shot of all three members, black and white for dramatic effect. They all have different expressions on their faces. The dude in the middle is like holding his collar like he's about to respectfully ask me for a ketchup packet at the counter. Dude on the left is having some trauma flashbacks. That guy has been through some shit. Dude on the right looks absolutely depressed like he meant to leave the band a month ago. And they're like, no, no, no. We got to finish the Texas Jerusalem crossroads. It's going to be sick. The Texas flag in the background and the Star of David in the corner. I don't know what the correlation is between Texas and Jerusalem. Are they Jewish Texans? Is that their lore? This is kind of crazy though. I haven't heard this album, so I'm going to listen to some of it and we'll see if it's as bad as the cover. Oh my god. Honestly, after hearing that, I kind of love the cover now. I don't know. I feel like if you're making stuff like that, you kind of have a right to make a cover like this. Does this one ruin the album? I say no. It enhances it. Death Grips. You're the snitch. It's already not a good sign that this comes up when looking up the cover. I'm a little scared. Oh, okay. I remember this one. It's not even that bad. If I saw this cover today, I'd totally think it's AI generated. But no, I think they actually stuck their mouths in this play thing. Or it's Photoshop. I don't know. I mean, knowing Death Grips, this isn't even their worst cover. And cursed images are kind of Death Grips brand. So for how like dirty the album sounds, I feel like this is a pretty perfect cover. Does this cover ruin the album. I think it could be better, but no, I don't think so. Staying on the Death Grips train, we got Death Grips No Love Deep Web. I remember listening to this one in high school, and for the longest time, I thought this was the cover, and I thought it was a strange choice. I was like, what? what is this? Like a bathroom ceiling and just this black rectangle? It wasn't for a while until I saw the actual cover, on a music forum. I don't think I can show it on here, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a different censored version. I think you can get the gist. It's male genitalia with the album name written on it. And honestly, it's, it's kind of iconic. Pretty much the same stuff that I said for You're the Snitch, but times 10. This is such a dark, unclean album <laughs> that the cover honestly visualizes what it feels like. To me, this album feels like you're sitting in a dark, moist corner of the deep web, and there's a scary homeless man yelling at you trying to sell you drugs. So I feel like the cover kind of looks like that. I will say though, if they didn't have this black rectangle version on streaming, I probably wouldn't listen to it a lot, just because I don't want to see that on my phone. But with the black rectangle, it's fine. Does this cover ruin the album? Almost. 31520 by Childish Gambino. Doesn't ruin it, but I wish it had something. I don't know, this album's so lush and beautifully produced that I feel like the intricate art style of the cover kind of fits it. I'm just kidding. It's a white square. Why did he choose the white square? I don't know. This whole album's kind of an enigma to me. The way he released this album with like no promotion, it kind of felt like he wanted people to forget about this album. I'm pretty sure he surprise dropped it with no promotion whatsoever. And I mean, going by the date that it came out, I'm pretty sure a lot of us were busy with other things at that time. So I didn't really know this album existed till like six months later. And when I saw it, I thought it was an accident. Like someone hacked his Spotify. Yeah, I don't know why he went with the 
plain white square for a cover, but I do feel like it does kind of ruin the album. There's just nothing to refer to. The name of the album's a date, most of the song names are dates, and the album cover is just a white square. So I can't imagine recommending this album to people and being like, yo, have you heard 31520 by Childish Gambino? No, what? Which one's that? Oh, the one with uh, the white square album cover. Well, what's your favorite song on it? I don't know. I kind of like 84221, but my favorite might be 1108. Clef? Does this cover ruin the album? Yeah, I think it does. Blanket by Kevin Abstract. I think this is actually the most recent accurate example of this for me because I hate this cover. It's this person staring at the camera in this dark ominous room. They have like a face mask on and I think a wig and it's just it's really uncanny. Kind of reminds me of that one Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> Needle, please. And I don't really know what to take from it. It just makes me uncomfortable. Okay, but this one wouldn't be that big of a deal if the original cover wasn't so much better. This is the current cover. This was the original cover. It's so much better. All the promotion for this album was involving these colorful characters that looked like they came out of a kid's show. Kevin was exploring this new indie rock sound that felt really free and like he was sort of finding himself after leaving Brockhampton. And so when I saw this cover announced initially, I was like, wow, this is a pretty perfect cover. He's looking off into the distance, the lights hitting his face, and he's being group hugged by these big friendly mascot dudes. It feels like a perfect representation of him exploring this new sound and sort of finding himself. And then he changes it to this, which kind of looks like it would fit as a Death Grips cover. Does this cover ruin the album? I think it does. Kanye West's Donda. Okay, I mean, this one has the same issue as that Childish Gambino record. It's it's just a black square. I don't know, I feel like everyone looked past this album cover at the time because everyone was so excited that the album actually dropped. But looking back, I do feel like it makes an already kind of forgettable album a little more forgettable. There's just no imagery to hold on to. I don't know, I think I prefer the white square. I don't know, the black square really just feels like I'm staring into a void and I don't know how I feel about that. I would say this one ruins the album, but I don't think the album was good enough to ruin in the first place. So is it a bad cover? Yeah. Does it ruin the album? No. Almost all of Drake's albums. <laughs> Are they really that bad? I feel like I've never paid attention to a Drake album cover. I kind of like if you're reading this, it's too late. I know it's kind of edgy, but I feel like it went along with his like sad boy attitude he had back then. And I thought Views was fine. It was kind of, it was kind of cool. Tiny little Drake hanging out on top of the building. Other than those though, now that you mention it, they aren't very good, are they? I don't know, I would say his only horrible cover is CLB, but in my opinion, that album kind of sucks anyway, though that one is pretty remarkable. This cover's gotta go in a museum for being this bad. I don't know, I don't think the album covers are the issue with this one. So no, Drake's album art does not ruin the album. Limp Biscuit Chocolate Starfish. Okay, th this is the best example so far because I don't even think I've heard this album, but I don't care and I'm not gonna listen to it because frankly, I don't care how good the music is, I'm not listening to something with this as the album cover. It's like they came up with the chocolate starfish part and then wanted to one-up themselves with making the rest just as gross. I don't know what the deal is with these like naked gremlin dudes bathing in the hot dog water, but I hate it. Especially those dudes in the back just crawling towards you. Oh my god. Yeah, this one's just disgusting and just gives me like edgy elementary schooler trying to be gross vibes. I don't like it. Seeing as I will never listen to this album, Album because of the cover, I would say yes, this one ruins the album. Bjork, homogenic. Yeah, see, this one would bother me a lot more if I wasn't aware of how Bjork is and Bjork's covers and stuff. So I feel like I'm kind of used to her having this kind of weird aesthetic, but I can't even look at this cover. I feel like it's making eye contact with me. <laughs> it's so symmetrical and with the hair and the robe, looks like an evil Star Wars Empress. God, and the neck thing? I feel like her head's gonna pop off and another little Bjork's gonna pop out. It is kind of a shame when she makes such beautiful and well-made music that it has an album cover that I feel like I can't look at, but does it ruin the album? Album. It makes me really uncomfortable, but I feel like her music's good enough that I can get past it and I see the vision. So no, this one does not ruin the album. 
Malibu Ken by Aesop Rock. I actually just revisited this album. I used to be a big Aesop Rock fan, not as much anymore. Same with Tobacco, great producer. So I thought their styles melded really well for a collab album, but I have to agree that the cover is kind of nasty, but it's got such like adult swim vibes. I don't know if anyone remembers the show Problem Solvers. It was this really like ugly neon cartoon that aired on Cartoon Network for a very short amount of time. I think it got canceled really fast. The Problem Solvers. I really liked it. The cover kind of reminds me of that. A mix between that and those like uncomfortably realistic stills in Flapjack is a gross cover, but I think it goes along with the music really well. I don't know, the way Aesop Rock's rapping sounds like someone doing slam poetry on a bad trip, combined with Tobacco's harsh synthy production, I feel like the album cover is kind of perfect. I'm sorry, but I don't think it ruins it. Last one, never mind by Nirvana. This one's a bit of a controversial one. I have no clue if it's actually controversial. I just feel like it would be. The album cover features a naked baby swimming towards money that's on a hook. And I think as a cover, it works really well, especially with the sort of themes and motifs Nirvana would have in their music. I feel like this cover is sort of a sign of the times. I don't know if they were faced with any pushback at the time, but I feel like you definitely could not put out this cover these days. It just makes me kind of uncomfy. I'll be listening to some Nirvana, minding my own business, get a note notification, look down at my phone, and BAM! Naked Baby. So I completely agree, and I get it, but the cover as a whole is pretty good, and I know there were no weird intentions with the cover on the band's part, so at the end of the day, I'm fine with it, and I don't think it ruins the album. There you have it. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree with my decisions and any other albums that you think are ruined by the album covers. This was super fun. So if you guys liked it, I'll definitely do a part two. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like. And if you really liked the video, hit the subscribe button. It really helps. Bye.